bodies and warm up. Thank you for worshiping with us online if you guys are online. I know this morning it was a little different feel, but we live on the islands, so we want us to give that island vibe today. Starting today and through the rest of this week, let's be in prayer for the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. The details on giving to this offering will be on our website, but let's be in prayer for that offering. Let's continue in worship.
Hello church family. Um, I was asked to share about my prayer life. Uh, I learned in Sunday school that prayer consists of four parts. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication, which I learned is praying about myself and others. I don't do as much adoration as I like during my individual prayer, but I try to praise God in front of the kids to help um, them see the amazing things God does or just in the beauty of His creation around us. Regarding confession, I am also not as good at this aspect as I like to be. However, as soon as I have a negative thought or I notice myself doing wrong, I try to confess right away and ask for forgiveness. I keep on asking for forgiveness for the same things over and over and I feel bad that I keep on making the same mistakes. But I am thankful that even if it is three steps forward, two steps back, um, he is loving and patient with me. Um, Thanksgiving is a lot easier for me to pray about compared to the other um, others mentioned earlier. This is another one that I've been trying to verbalize more in hopes that we can help the kids practice being thankful even in the small things in our daily life. Finally, supplication is the majority of my prayers and I am trying to balance it out with the other aspects of prayer and I'm trying to pray more about others instead of just about myself. Um, although I struggle with that a lot. Um, I still, I, I feel closer to God when I have my conversations throughout the day with Him rather than my prayer time in the evening. I often forget to do so, but when I keep connected throughout the day, He helps me get through the stressful and bad days. My prayer is that I will continue to become a better prayer warrior as well as a better witness to the people around me. Thank you, church family. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person soon. Thank you. Good morning. Is this on? Yeah, there you go. And I hope you guys had a good week. Uh, you know, in preparing for our time together this morning, I began thinking about... <clears throat> In an experience I had back in, in college, way back when, and, and it was um, in taking a required class. So if you went to the University of Hawaii, you probably had to take a class called Speech 151. You know, it was kind of required. It was one of those basics. And, you know, as I, kind of how I approach everything, I, I kind of feel like, well, you know, how hard can it be? That's kind of my philosophy all the time. And, and so... You know, I went into it thinking, well, you know, it's, it's talking. How hard can this be? It's not like, you know, English where you got to write papers. And, <clears throat> you know, and so as I, you know, when I, when I kind of signed up, I took the class. I kind of looked at the syllabus and I re-looked at it, you know. And so, you know, basically it's an introductory course designed to increase our understanding of the basic communication processes. You know, and, you know, the desired outcome was that it would improve, you know, our ability to communicate. So, you know, again, I, I approach it, and then as I'm going through the semester, and as I finish it, you know, I realize a few things in taking this class. First, I, I, I realized that it was actually harder than I, I thought it was going to be, you know, uh, because, you know, I don't know what I was thinking, but we still had to write out the speeches and turn them in. So it's kind of like there's writing and speaking, and so there was like double the work. Um, so that, that didn't, you know, wasn't what I had anticipated. And <clears throat> the second thing, which was extremely important, was that I, I'm not a big fan of public speaking. I don't like to speak in public, which is kind of weird, I think, right now in this day and age as, you know... After that, I felt this calling into ministry, and, and if, you know, I, this church that I grew up in right here, Pro City, most people will know that, you know, not once did I ever think that I would be a pastor, because I didn't want to be the guy up in the front speaking all the time. You know, I, I, I just didn't. I, I kind of saw myself more as like the, the associate minister of fun. That's what I kind of like that, or food, you know, like, so when I was doing student ministry, I mean, you know... I don't even know if I could do youth ministry today because it's so complex. But back in the day, you needed a basketball and maybe about four pizzas, and you could develop an amazing youth group. You know, and, and you know, so that was a, kind of the deal where I just discovered that man, I, you know, I'm not this fan of public speaking. You know, but you know, it is what it is, and 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 you know, I guess the Lord has this amazing sense of humor 
But then the other thing that I learned <clears throat> was that, you know, if I wanted to communicate effectively, and this was kind of off of the, what our professor was teaching us, um, that your, your speech needed to have these three essential components, right? You know, and, and, and what she said was, you know, you know, every speech needed an introduction, <clears throat> you know, and, and it was kind of like this, this crucial contact connection with, you know, at the start of your speech with your hearers so that, you know, you make this connection right off the bat, you know. You know, they would say, off, often say like either a startling statement or a, a story where, where within the first three minutes, if you, if you lose people in the first three minutes, you kind of lost them the whole way. So, you know, your introduction was vital. But then you also needed, you know, what she called the body, where this is where the substance of your speech was at. You know, this is kind of the core. This is why you're trying to, you know, what you're trying to communicate. And then the conclusion, which, you know, you kind of wrap it all up, you kind of bring it together, you know, you kind of sum it all up, you know. And why they're all important, because even at the conclusion, because people, that's what they remember, right? You need the introduction to kind of keep people's attention. You need the body, because this is the kind of the, the core of all that's going on. And the conclusion, if you do a poor job, then they kind of forget the whole thing, which to me was like, man, this is why I hate public speaking, you know, it's, that's kind of the deal, right? But the one thing that I appreciated about <clears throat> my professor was that although she required this format, you know, she, she was quick to say that this here is not the only way to communicate, to give a speech. This is a way. But then she also said, this is my way, and so this is the way that we're going to do it here. But, but I did appreciate the fact that she said, you know, it, it wasn't, this isn't the only way. So don't go out there thinking that this is the only way to do it. This is just the way we do it here. This is the way she was taught. This is the way she teaches. And so this is a way. <clears throat> but understand that it's not the only way. <clears throat> now, the reason I, I thought I'd share that, I kind of opened with that this morning is that, you know, a couple of weeks ago we talked about why we ought to pray. You know, we, we touched on the power of prayer, how it, uh, you know, allows us to see others and, and carry their burdens, how it transforms the way we, we see God. But it also, because, you know, the, the why, the reason we pray is that God he desires this of us. And a week ago, Pastor Allen, he, he touched on, you know, fasting, you know, how fasting and prayer are so important in the life of a believer. And this morning, as we continue our look at our, you know, our conversations with God, I want us to explore another, another aspect of the how. You know, how we pray. Now, let me just say that there are a multitude of ways that we can approach prayer. You know, again, last week we looked at fasting and, and prayer. This week, I'd like for us to take a look at a, a formula for prayer. Again, it's not the only way, but rather it's a way. Sort of like what my, my professor in college had shared. And, and this formula, it is somewhat of a loose adaptation of the model prayer that we see Jesus teaching in the Gospel of Matthew. And so why don't we just start there, and, and I'll read that for us. If you have your Bibles, <clears throat> I'm going to be reading Matthew 6, and I'm going to start with verse 9, so you can kind of track with me on that in your Bibles or on the screen. And it begins by saying, This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. <clears throat> and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. You know, the first thing Jesus says here 
is this then is how you should pray. And, and I get from this is he clearly wants us to pray. He desires this of us. He presents us here with the how. So that's kind of a, 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 an important thing. He's saying that this then you know, is, is how you should pray. So as we take a deeper dive into this model, you know, like I said earlier, I'd like for us to take a look at a, at a formula for prayer that's based loosely off of this prayer of Jesus. Again, it's not the only way, but rather a way. And it's a way that I believe that may be helpful as we approach our conversations with God. So let's take a look at this formula. And it's called the Acts Method and, and, and of prayer. And so let's just kind of jump in and, and take a look at the A in Acts. And, and the A stands, you know, it, it stands for adoration. And I believe it's first in this formula for a reason. You know, obviously... If the A wasn't the first part, it would throw off the whole acronym of Acts. You know, it would just kind of, you know, it wouldn't make sense at all. But, but really, the more importantly, it, it's how we, all of us who call ourselves Christians or, or followers of Jesus, you know, it's how we ought to approach the Lord. And that's with our eyes and our hearts focused on Him. This allows us to praise God for who he is rather than what he can do for us. And I want us to, to kind of to, to take note of that, you know, because really to praise God for who he is, not <clears throat> what he can do for us. And, and, and most of us, if we're honest, we, we are more into that. We, we understand that a whole lot better because we, are, we can be excited about Things that go our way. We can be excited about how this impacts me or us. But here, we need to be excited about who he is. Not simply what he can do for us. You know, I heard it said this way. Our entire perspective gains clarity when we're reminded who God is. So adoration, you know, it, it's all about our praise to God, our worship of him. It's an expression of love and trust for a loving, kind, merciful, majestic God. You know, what does that look in our lives? You know, how does that look in our lives? You know, um, you know well, it, it, it could be a song of praise. You know, if we're, we're, we're in adoration of God, that song, of, and, and, and it doesn't have to be coming from the, 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 the sound of our lips, but one, it could be one that we sing internally. Or it could be praying through a psalm of worship. I don't know about you, but, you know, I shared with the first of it that the, the book of Psalms is one of my, my favorite books in the Bible. And I often read through these Psalms because really the essence of the Psalms are these prayers to God. Perhaps it's declaring his attributes, you know, his mercy, his kindness. His strength. Or perhaps it's just <clears throat> kneeling, sitting, or standing with our hands stretched out, simply in awe of who He is. See, Jesus begins His prayer <clears throat> with these words of adoration. He prays, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You know, meaning, he said, you know, our Father in heaven, holy 
is your name. Revered is your name. Special is your name. You know, so when we go to the Lord in, in prayer, let me challenge us. May we, may we take the time to acknowledge who he is and exalt his name because he is most definitely worthy. And I'd like for us to, to kind of move on here and, and, and take a look at the sea in Acts. And here we're talking about confession. And, and, and this comes, you know, after we acknowledge who God is. You know, the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-forgiving, all-loving creator and sustainer of all that was and all that is. And as a result of acknowledging who God is, you know, and, and praising him for that, confession is the practice of acknowledging who we are. Okay? You know, we, we just got done thing, you know, thanking him and praising for who he is, but, but confession is acknowledging, acknowledging who we are. Imperfect individuals who have fallen short in need of forgiveness from the Savior. And let me add to that. It's not just acknowledging this. It's acting on it also. Listen to verse 12. Again, it says, And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. As we read these words, forgive us our debts. It's the belief of most scholars that the intention here is focused on the forgiveness of sins. You know, one scholar puts it this way, that the, the choice of the, this word selection reflects the fact that all sins have placed us in God's debt. So confession is acknowledging the junk in our lives and admitting our part in it and seeking God's forgiveness for it. Now this isn't, you know, only acknowledging, again, our role, but it's accompanied with this desire to be clean from the inside out. In newsflash, we, we all fall short which means we all need forgiveness. The Apostle John puts it this way in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. He says this, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You know, so may we seek his forgiveness through the acknowledgement and the confession of the areas we fall short. <clears throat> you know, I want to move on to the T in Acts. <clears throat> and, 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 and here this stands for Thanksgiving. Now, amazingly enough that this aspect of prayer, it really, it, it's not found in the model prayer, you know. But we see it throughout Scripture, and this, you know, us giving thanks is a vital part of, of how we pray. <clears throat> you know, I think most of us, we understand confession. You know, and so where adoration is about who God is, thanksgiving is all about what God has done. You know, do we take time in prayer to, to acknowledge that? You know, think about that. <clears throat> you know, we haven't, most of us, I would say all of us can get to a point where we realize that we haven't come to this point in life on our own. You know, and, and so have we acknowledged the times where we needed help and we received it? You know, that's what Thanksgiving is. 
you know, in Thanksgiving, I think about a lot of things. But, but you know, I was thinking about this, and <clears throat> I, I thought about this, you know, for as long as I can remember. I, I like watching action movies or action TV shows. <clears throat> you know, I especially like, you know, either cowboy or, or especially war type movies where, you know, they, these guys go in, they invade a place, they take it over, they come in and they save the day, you know, and <clears throat> when they have these, you know, the focus is on like, you know, either the Navy SEALs or, uh, you know, the <clears throat> Rangers are these special operators that, and they come in and they do these missions. I, I'm all about that. I like watching it. They blow up things and they save people and I'm like, wow, this is amazing, right, you know. <clears throat> And these guys, they come in, and, you, you know, when I watch these movies, sometimes these missions, they aren't short missions. They last for a while. And so, you know, they train. They talk about training and, and, and not needing sleep for days at a time, you know. And I used to think, like, wow, man, I can be all up in that, man. I, I'm, I'm all about that, you know. And, and so, yeah, that, I, that would be so amazing if I could do those things. You know, and, and I used to think, because, again, you know, I'm the eternal optimist when it comes to things like that. Like, yeah, I think I could do that, right? You know, and, and then <clears throat> my wife and I, we had kids. And, and, and as we, you know, our kids were young, and I remember after our firstborn and then our, our second daughter, I, I just remember thinking to myself, what, what in the world was, was I thinking having kids? You know, I mean, because, you know, like I would... Like, I, I, you know, at first I was going to say I wasn't complaining, but I'll just admit it. I, you know, I was kind of this, I was a whiner. I was a whiner because I'd be like, man, it's like, how do people survive without sleep? Because, you know, my wife was like, okay, we are a team. I'm all about team. So this is the deal, right? You know, when, when the girls are young, <clears throat> she will nurse them. But I have to wake up, get them, change the diaper bring them to her, you know, and this is me, right, I'm whining, because that's, that's all I got to do, just get up, change the diaper, you know, it's kind of like in zombie mode, bring them to her, jump back in bed, and go back to sleep, and then she has to do all the work, right, you know, and so, you know, and that, and the whole time, I'm just like, man, I, I cannot handle, this is like, you know, because you cannot go back to bed just like that, you know, so sometimes I'm just up, sometimes I'm like, man, and then the next day at work, I'm just like, Man, I, I, you know, there's no way I can swoop in and save the day like this because I can't even stay awake, you know. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm just kind of whining the whole time. And I remember one evening that I couldn't go back to bed and I was just standing in, in our girl's room and I was just, just watching, you know, our older daughter sleep because her younger daughter was being nursed. And in the midst of my whining and complaining, to the Lord, I remember it, it, it somehow shifted at one point to me just being in awe, you know, of my kids and just looking there and being in awe and, and, and just kind of this from whining and complaining to this place of thanksgiving, you know, that giving thanks to God that, that he would allow me to play a small part in creating something so amazing. And, 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 you know, we take for granted a lot of things. But, you know, when, uh, standing there, man, we had two amazing, healthy girls. And rather than whining, which I was doing, you know, I guess if this is all God where I got to this place where, man, you know, this is amazing. How can I whine when I ought to be giving thanks? Now, you might be thinking, why in the world am I talking about this? You know, why am I talking about this now? Because we just talked about, you know, sort of like being in awe of God and when we were talking about adoration. But, but, but kind of track with me here because, you know, here's where I'm going with this. You see, because I realized this past year has has been anything but normal. It's been pretty rough for a lot of people. And for some of us, it's been in, uh, maybe perhaps a little bit more overwhelming. But even in situations 
that may seem a little bit tough. It may seem a bit overwhelming. It may seem like, wow, you know, my, my situation doesn't seem as, as good as the other person's or the person that I'm seeing or the, the person that I'm working with. But even in the midst of that, I believe that there are things, there are situations, people, blessings that we can be thankful for. You know, and, and uh, you know, maybe take a moment, pause, think about that. Even in the midst of a trying situation. And let me challenge you to 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 pray about that. That God will point out, I think there are things that we can give thanks for. You see, giving thanks in the good times, I believe is fairly easy. We may forget at times because we're having fun. We're we're soaking it in. But in the good times, if we're honest, giving thanks is fairly easy. Giving thanks in the all right average times may, may take a little effort. Because sometimes the me factor comes in. Giving thanks for the lessons learned in the hard times. I believe that will take a little faith. But it's not impossible. Listen to Paul's instructions on thanksgiving. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, he says this, Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, when are we to give thanks? Well, here Paul is talking about, you know, through prayer. And it's not just when we feel like it. Or some of the time or only when the circumstances are good going our way. When we feel like we have an abundance to give thanks for. But he says in all circumstances. In Ephesians 5:20, we hear Paul saying this, always giving thanks to God the Father to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Christ Jesus. Again, Paul is saying that giving thanks is a practice to be done in all situations and for all things. Not just some things or only good things, but again for all things. And in The book of Psalms, the 118th chapter, the first verse there, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And I want us to understand that when times are hard, when we're experiencing and overwhelmment in our lives when we're sad or when we're upset. He, God, is still good. You know, when we drop the ball, when we fall short, when we make mistakes, when we stumble, His love, God's love, It still endures. So may we be in the practice of giving thanks. And finally, let's let's finish things up this morning with the S in Acts. And this morning we're we're talking about here supplication, making our requests to God. This, now, this is the part of prayer that I believe most of us we're pretty familiar with. You know, and, 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 and most of us, that's why we pray, because we, we want something or we, we need something, so we pray. You know, when I was a teenager, I remember praying. I wasn't a religious or spiritual person in, in the early, in my high school years. But I prayed. You know, there, there were many times where Things happen as a result of, you know, my curiosity, you know, that resulted in a bad outcome. And I remember praying, you know. 
I remember praying because I did some amazingly dumb things. I remember praying because I made a bad decision and it resulted in an even worse outcome. Praying. So we all, I believe, we're all familiar with with this type of prayer. You know, oftentimes, you know, again, I didn't go to church, but I was like, God, you know, if you help me, man, I will go to church. I, I will do this. I will do that. You know, and then as the situation gets better, well, God, you know, yeah, thanks, but, you know, I think that part of it was, like, my doing, you know, and, and I would bargain, I would say all these things, but, but supplication, this was kind of the deal, prayer, that was, that was me. And I, and I suspect that's many of us. You see, that's what supplication is. It's the act of bringing our needs and our worries to God. We come before him, we ask the Lord to work on our behalf. Or on the behalf of those we care about. Or on the behalf of those who need him. In the model prayer, Jesus prays several verses. You know, and several verses here are focused on supplication, our requests. You know, these requests that are directed to God. You know, let's walk through some of these verses and, and see the different ways that he lays out these requests to the Father. Verse 10, he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see, this is a prayer on behalf of those who need to experience the love of God. Those who need him. It's a prayer for for the, the spreading of God's kingdom. You know, the spreading of God's love around the world. But it's also a prayer for us. It's a prayer that we, God's people, would, that he would find us faithful and obedient in living out our faith. That we would be courageous in how we choose to live. You know, the second part of this verse assumes that God's will is already done in heaven, so our focus here is on planet earth. And, and it's a, a focus prayer that I believe everyone who calls themselves a Christian, they, they ought to pray. That prayer is that each day we open our eyes, you know, when we open our eyes in the morning, we, you know, our goal, our desire ought to be that our actions, our words, our thoughts, they ought to be his thoughts and not ours. You know, and you know that I'm an avid uh, fast food, junk food kind of person, right? You know, this, so this is kind of the opposite of the Burger King theology, right? You know, because Burger King is saying that, you know, you can have it your way. We, if we're honest, we want it our way. We get up in the morning, we want things our way. You know, we want to go to work without traffic. We want ideal conditions. We want, you know, if God was saying this is the deal, we don't keep saying that, yes, Lord, your will, painful will be done in my life. We want it our way. But the second part, you know, the prayer is saying that that's how we ought to get up each morning. That, Lord, your will be done in my life. Not my will. Not, not the pastor's will or my Sunday school teacher's will or whoever, but, but your will. <clears throat> and it goes without saying that, that your will, and let me be obedient to that. Let me be okay with that. Let me rejoice in the fact that this is your will and let me live it out. And then in verse 11, he says, give us today our daily bread. Now, this is usually a request made on behalf, you know, on our behalf. But now it's, it's easy to think that this is, you know, and kind of a, a our thing, you know, a my thing. You know, this give, give me today, you know, the daily bread, this sustenance, what I, I need, you know, to, to fill me, you know. And, and, and so, you know, oftentimes we misinterpret. This is, uh, we want us, God, to fill us with the things that we want, the things that we need, the things that, that will be helpful to me. 
But let me encourage us not to get locked into only that. Because it is. You know, it is a way of, of God providing for us. But again, as we switch gears, you know, perhaps it's asking God on our behalf. We can, you know, we can definitely begin to start praying for other things that we might need. Such as qualities of character. Lord, you know, grant me wisdom. Let me see things the way you want me to see them. Give me courage, you know, Lord, you know, in how I choose to live out my life. You know, for me, you know, it would be like, Lord, you know, perhaps I need gentleness. You know, and, and, and rather than telling people around me, yeah, just suck it up, you know, I, maybe I just need to just say, okay, Lord, what, how can I put myself in their shoes? And then begin to walk with them. You know, we might pray for faith to push us through when, when things may not be as bright as we would like them to be. Or perhaps we pray for endurance or guidance or clarity as we continue to walk with him. You know, and, and I just want us to, so when we pray for this, it's not always about us. Verse 13, as we move on, it says, as in, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the, from the evil one. And now this is a request for protection from God in our daily confrontation with the temptation of sin. This is also an example of asking for the Lord's help, seeking his strength, not only on our behalf, but on behalf of those we care about, as well as those who are in need of it. You know, when I think about it, I haven't really met anyone whose life is, you know, is absence of struggle from struggles, but and also, you know, that have experienced this temptation-free life. So this is a prayer that we all need to be praying. In matters of seeking God's help, you know, what does this look like as it's applied to our lives? Well, I believe it's just what we've been talking about. It's, it's going to the Lord in prayer. It's, it's seeking his help, his strength. And again, it's not only on our behalf, but it's on behalf of those we care about, those whom we think may need his help. See, this is, this is supplicate. This is what we go to God for. And, and again, I just want us to, to not get so locked in on we go to God for what me, myself, and I may need. But we can, all, we, we can also go to him on behalf of others. You know, let, me, let me try and wrap things up. And, I, and I'm going to kind of just kind of close after this. But... With these words from, you know, pastor and author Max Lucado. Now, he shares these words, and why these words resonate with me so much is, is because what I hear from people about prayer. Let me read this. He says, our prayers may be awkward. Our attempts may be feeble. But since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. And again, I say this because I often hear like, well, you know, I, I, I don't know if I should pray. I, I don't know the right words to pray. I don't know, you know, if I'm saying it right or, you know, what others might think. And again, that was me as a young, you know, I've shared this before, as a young college student, I remember coming to a prayer meeting, and, and I used to think that, man, you, if you pray, you, you got to pray in the King James Version, because everybody was praying that way, our Father, you know, our doubt. And I'm like, I don't understand a single word these people are saying here, you know, and, and I don't know if I can pray, because, you know, I, I, in my prayers, there's a lot of the kinds and all these other things which they may not understand. But, but you know, it, it, it's not about 
what we say or how we say it. But it's the one who hears it. And I share this to remind us that the Acts approach to prayer is not the only way to pray. It's simply a way to pray. You see, the most important thing is not how we pray, but that we pray. Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says this. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction. And Paul closes with these words, faithful in prayer. So let me encourage us to pray. Please pray with me. Our Father, we are so grateful this morning, God. Lord, and as we covered this approach to prayer, this Acts method, again, it's not the only way we can converse with you, that we can, that we can spend time with you, but it's a way. And so, Father, we, our prayer is one of praise, but it's also one of acknowledgement that you are indeed God and we are not. And in the areas we fall short, we, we seek forgiveness. We come with gratitude, but we also come, Lord, with needs. And so, Father, we, we are grateful for the privilege to communicate with you. And we are thankful that you are a God that so loves us. So, Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. Before we get into worship, I just have a little announcement. After service, if there's anyone that wants to pray, not only for concerns, but if there is joy in your heart that is spilling over and you want to tell that to Jesus, come, let us pray. There's a scripture for this joy in Psalm 71, 23. My lips will shout with joy when I sing praises to you. Or you can reach me at prayer at fbcprocity.org. <clears throat> I know this morning, Pastor Sterling talked about four parts of prayer. Let's go to the Lord with this in mind. I'll lead you and give you a little time just for you to be with the Lord. So let us start with adoration. You know, only you can bring your own special praises and worship to Jesus. Let's use this quiet time. Let us pray. Confession. Acknowledge that you are imperfect. Bring yourself to Jesus and share your confession with him. Let us pray. Thanksgiving. Lift up to Jesus for the great things he has done in your life. Let us pray. supplication. Now I want you to bring your needs, bring the burden of others to Jesus. At this time, ask God, how may you be a servant to him? Bless you. Bless me with the wisdom of the knowledge of knowing Jesus, with love, with kindness, with gentleness. Let us pray. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your words this morning. They remind us how we should pray. Help us to remember and put to practice what we learned this morning. Not just on Sundays, but every day. Hear our genuine heart singing out praises and worship to you. Father, we truly, we truly want to be, build a relationship with you. We want to hear your voice. We look forward for your guidance. We truly desire to grow close to you. 
and to be pleasing to you. Bless each one here and those who are listening from afar, for each one has a loving heart for you. Be with all of us as we go our own ways this week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.
hope that you continue to go to the Lord in prayer. And you pray that simple prayer. And he will answer it. Once again, we can go to our website, put in a prayer request over there. Or you can email the prayer at fecprocity.org straight. We have a prayer wall downstairs for the people in person. As you're making your way downstairs, you can write a prayer request and put it on that wall. If there's a prayer request on that wall, you can take it down and pray for that person. Let's just be in prayer this week, this month. Once again, thank you for being here. If you're in person, please wait till the usher excuses you. If you're online, have a great week, everyone. And we hope to see you again next week.